Hello and welcome to the Modern Skein podcast. My name is Sharon Graff and I am the owner of the Modern Skein and that little tail that just went by is my co-host that doesn't like to be seen, Surrey. So welcome back to the podcast. It feels like it's been forever since I've podcasted, although it technically hasn't because I filmed a podcast a few weeks ago that got lost in the shuffle and it it just wasn't very good, honestly. So we're just scrapping that one and we're starting with this one. So welcome back to all of our returning viewers and welcome if you're a first time viewer. Y'all that have been watching me for a while know I really don't like it when people go back to the beginning because I feel like I've learned a lot about podcasting over the years. Um, those first few episodes are rough. So just bear that in mind. If you do decide to watch from the beginning, more power to you. Thank you for tuning in for sure. Um, that's back in the day when the shop was half its size. So um, grab your beverage. See, I've been not podcasting very often because I'm saying um again. Oh, I gotta get back in the habit. So the plan, speaking of habits, the plan is Am I going to be able to do it? Yeah, I'm going to just do it. Plan is to do a podcast every week for the month of December as our week of vlogmas weeks, whatever we're calling it. I am not a day-to-day -day vlogger. For one, I don't edit my own podcast. I think it's, I can't watch myself. That's just me. So my dear sweet husband is the one who edits and puts all the show notes in and all that awesome stuff um and he would definitely hate it if i did something every day so once a week i think is good plus then i feel like if it's daily i wouldn't have any content for you guys um so stay tuned for that i guess technically this is kind of the first one because this will get uploaded this weekend and it will already be december so kicking it off it's crazy to say it's already December. It's been a whirlwind of a year for sure. And I just want to stop and say thank you to every single one of you guys, our viewers, our customers, our Instagram followers. Instagram followers, y'all have been through a lot this past few days. We've become Insta famous and not in a great way because scammers. Ah, so if you are maybe just a YouTube follower, um, I would encourage you to go give us a follow on our real Instagram, The Modern Skein, just like our name, and give us a follow. Help us out with that. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. And thank you to everyone who participated in our Black Friday sale, our week, almost week long sale. It was amazing. You guys really showed up, and I am so super grateful and thankful. Thank you also for bearing with us. This is, it's not a one-man show, but it is a limited person's show and a show. That's not, what I'm trying to say is we're, there's just three of us that are working here. So bear with us as we have packaged up all of your orders. I know there has been a few things that have glitched on our website. Unfortunately, we are reaching out to you guys about those issues. So thank you so much for just being kind to a small business owner and our employees. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And remember to pass on gratitude to everyone, especially small business owners, workers, and all this stuff during this season because it's very, very frustrating um, when websites don't work like they're supposed to, inventory doesn't work like it's supposed to, mail services don't work like they're supposed to. And unfortunately, it's us small businesses that usually get the brunt of the complaining when in fact, many times it's out of our control. So just take a moment, be grateful. And thank you. So grab your beverage. I have coffee this morning. It got cold again. By the way, if you're not from Texas, welcome to Texas weather, where we go from 84 degrees and muggy, nasty, horrible yesterday to 47 
um, this morning, and I don't think the high is supposed to get above like 50. Um, and it'll probably be 80 again tomorrow. So we just go, wee, you want to be on the podcast? It's like, eh, no. So, <clears throat> finished objects. As you can see, I am wearing my Quattro wrap, uh, which I apparently have been misspelling every which possible misspelling um, that there is. It apparently does not begin with a Q. It begins with a C U A. T-T-R-O, I think. It's a Hohi Locatelli design. So, and it's in the Grace um, MDK book. So this is the Quattro wrap. It is done in pieces. So you do each of these triangles and then just stitch them together using a grafting stitch. Very, very easy. I suppose you could three needle bind off it if you really hated stitching just know that it would leave a ridge which might look cute especially if you did it on the right side um kind of plan it that way um you could also potentially use a crochet hook and like chain them together potentially um if you really despise sewing but this is a beautiful wrap this is all done in sport weight moondrake soft sport which is a lovely yarn we have on the back wall somewhere over there and it is gorgeous now i think let me look. Yeah, I think I have one more set of this original color scheme um, that I did. I'll say it's not original to the book. She did it in all shades of gray. Um, I, of course, love mine with my little pop of blue. I'm just going to keep like wrapping it around. Um, but it's like just those cozy wraps that are super snuggly, and I love it. Um, but we have lots of colors of Moondrake Soft Sport in tonals and variegated that would be gorgeous in. You could also do it in um, Andorra or the um, Blue Sky Alpaca Baby, uh, no, Blue Sky Fibers Baby Alpaca Sport, um, which we have pretty much a full complement in all of those bases still um, of colors. There are a few colors we're getting low on in the Andorra, but we still have a good complement in all those. And I do know of a few people that are just modifying slightly um, to make a slightly lighter weight wrap out of fingering. Um, four colors is all you need. Um, I will say if you're using Moondrake Soft Sport, you will not have yarn left. Like I played Extreme Yarn Chicken and technically used a different yarn to bind, um, to stitch them together that matched because I did not have enough. Um, Yardages say it I should my gauge y'all know it can be sometimes a little bit off So I'm gonna blame it on my gauge personally um, But just be aware um, You might run a little bit short um, I'll say the triangles are easy enough to modify you could easily leave off the last few rows if you are concerned about it um, And I also know of a few people who were like four is too long they're very petite or they're making it for a petite person so they just did three triangles and stitch them together for a shorter wrap and I also know of someone who's like no I want the world's longest scarf and they're doing six um, so it's easily modifiable as terms of length or pieces um, you could probably just do two and graft them together into a cowl which would be really cool as well so again, the pattern is the Quattro Wrap by Hohi Locatelli, and it was in the MDK Field Guide Grace. We have sold out of that, um, but the pattern is available on Ravelry. Okay, another finished object, and I'm going to actually take this off to show you, um, is my Sophie scarf. So I did the size large Sophie scarf, which I know doesn't really look large, but it is. And I did my, well, there's a little snag. Um, I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but I have a strand of the Krimke Stellaris, which is the glitter in here. So what this is, is a strand of Chelsea Luxe red carpet and fingering 
a strand of Shibui Mohair in the Syrah colorway and then a strand of the red gold Krimke glitter. So basically how you wear this is just like so. You don't have to tie it if you don't like it like right up by your neck. I can see this because like if I wear a coat I don't want the bulk of a shawl underneath my coat but I still want something up by my neck. Obviously with this v-neck this looks strange but I would put my coat on and then put this up to keep my neck all cozy. Um, the other thing, the real reason I chose red, because y'all know I don't usually do red, is because I have this vision for a Christmas Eve outfit. Thanks to one of our lovely viewers, Laura, um, the vision has changed ever so slightly. Um, I was thinking like a um, black with either a pop of red and then I was thinking I have and I'll show you in a minute a green sweater Christmas sweater I'm working on and I was thinking black pants and this green sweater and then this potentially if it's cold enough or put this on my purse like tie it like you know you, you tie the little silk scarves on your purse well then Laura said you should wear winter white pants and I was like oh my gosh I really should wear winter white pants so I was like I will just happen to go into this store that's right by the shop and see if they have any winter white pants. Um, because I didn't really want to go online and order any. I have the hardest time with pants, like not fitting in the thighs because I got some thighs. Anywho, um, that was my shoulder or technically my collarbone's cracking. I walked into the store and they had the most beautiful satin, like silk, um, winter white slacks. And I was like, oh, these are perfect. They're probably not going to fit. They fit like they were custom made for me. So needless to say, I did walk out with those. And so now my, my ensemble will be winter white pants and the green sweater, provided I finish it in time. I think I will and then put this on my purse and then I have um, I haven't mentioned this before but I have the most stunning champagne glitter um, evening shoes I'm gonna put those on so yeah that's my New Year's Eve outfit we always my family goes out to like a fancy dinner on Christmas Eve night we always dress up, um, so that's my dress up this evening or this this year. Um, so yeah, so my finished objects: Sophie scarf and the quattro wrap. Now for whips. I have definitely well two things. I cast on a whole bunch of stuff over the past couple weeks, and then over Thanksgiving break. Um, I uh, put this on. I am um, rediscovered some of my whips that had been put away. What is this hair doing? And I have rescued them because they need love. And now I want to finish them. So first off, first off, let me show some things. Okay, I did make some really good progress on my Sunday cardigan. I'm on the sleeve. I'm doing magic loop. This is why it's taking forever because my plan was to take one of the shorty sets. Just rip those off. Shorty sets that came in to um, do these and y'all bought me out. And then my inventory website glitched and it oversold them, which was not fun. But I have more on order. I am hoping they arrive they probably won't arrive by the time the podcast is up, but they should arrive like the first full week of December. Watch the Instagram for upsta upstates. Upstates. updates because when we get more of the shorty sets in, I am going to be posting. Um, we're also getting a huge, we have thousands of needles on their way um, of all sorts, chow goo, prim, crochet hooks, yeah, not just needles, um, likeys, cipras, 
all the needles are on their way. And of course, you know, they're probably all gonna arrive the same day and then overwhelm me with inventory. But anyway, this is my Sunday cardigan by Petite Knit. I'm really loving it. I finished the body. Um, I don't even know when. Oh, I think when we were at East Texas. I took this because it's like, I didn't have to think it's just knit on one side, purl on the other, and then ribbing. Um, so this was my downtime at the booth and evening knitting for East Texas Fiberfest. Which, if y'all found us at East Texas Fiberfest, welcome, and uh, we're glad to have you. So, that is my Sunday sweater. I probably have another couple more inches to go on the sleeve and then the cuff. I need to try it on and see exactly where it is. But that is coming along nicely. I hope to have that finished in the next week or so. <clears throat> Then, snack for later. Um, what's in here? Nothing. Hand soap. Because one needs hand soap in their knitting bag. Um, this. So this, I cast on pretty sure before or after the last time we filmed or the last podcast that is up. Um, this is the Grace Notes sweater from the Grace um, MDK book. Apparently I'm just going to knit all the things in there and it is so gorgeous. So I have joined in the round after uh, underneath the sleeves and finishing up the v-neck you can see there's this beautiful twisted stitch cable all down the front this is going to open up beautifully with blocking so it is now joined in the round and so now it's reached the point where it's just motoring along the yarn i'm using here is um, red stag fiber estate dk in the colorway jewel of the king which of course is now sold out but um I'm hoping to get a, is this the base that, this might be the base that he's sold out of right now, um, like he can't get at the moment, but, um, do I have it on anything else? I know I have it on fingering bases. I don't think I have it on Croft either. But we have tons of colors, um, tons of colors of estate have come in, um, so take a look at that on the website. This would be gorgeous. I will say, because of how dark it is, you don't see all of the the things from, I mean, you see it up close, but you don't see it from a distance. So if you wanna really see that texture, pick something like birch. Birch would be stunning. Um, I think we have forged steel, um, which would be beautiful as well for a light kind of steely gray blue path would be really pretty. Any of our um, DK yarns would be gorgeous. You could even use Double Sunday for this as well. Um, from Sandness Garn. So this is the Grace Notes and uh, yeah this is the sweater that I need to finish before Christmas Eve. So really need to finish it like two days before Christmas Eve so that it's time to block and dry and all that fun stuff. Okay moving on. What else do I have in here? I think that's it to put in here. So now we've reached the part where I'm going to show you some older whips that you've seen before on the podcast, but you have not seen in a long time. So first off, I was cleaning out, well, really, I wasn't cleaning out. I was just organizing my um, craft room area because that's also where I do a lot of my Christmas gift staging and all that kind of stuff. So I was getting my spots ready for Christmas gifts that I stash away in there and I was looking for a bag and I opened up my closet in there which is just like bottomless pit um, and saw this and I was like I forgot all about this I need to see how close I am to finishing all I need is sleeves so this is the Agnes by Camilla Vaud 
I really do love this. It's so good, you guys. Ugh. Okay. So, as you can see, body's bound off. I'm working on the sleeve now. This little marker is where I basically picked it up. And so I've just knit that much literally over like two days. But I've got another project that I got a lot more done on that I'll show you. So this is the Agnes by Camilla Vaud. The yarn I used is, um, so it's a sport weight pattern, but I used a fingering and a mohair hull together. So the fingering weight is all cottage sock from Red Stag Fiber, Welsh slate stone, sorry, Welsh slate cobblestone castle rock for this light in the main body, and then stone path for the greeny kind of color. And then I paired each one with a Bichamboche mohair that matched it. I know this one was the black. This one I believe was called the medium gray, light gray or just regular gray. And then I honestly have no idea what this one was, but it was kind of a green gold. Might have been green gold or dark gold, something like that. So I don't have the ball bands for these either. So this is the Agnes, um, I only need sleeves. So, and they're pretty much just straight sleeves with ribbing. It's gonna go fast, at least I hope it is. Um, so this is now sitting in my craft room where basically every morning I knit um, some rows on my sleeve. It's kind of my wake up and knit. I've started back in my morning knitting routine and I forgot how much I missed it. I really did. I really love a slow morning. Um, I'm so glad I'm starting to do that again. It really helps like calm my brain. I get some reading done. I listen to a podcast or I watch a podcast on YouTube or I just listen to some soft music and read a book, something like that, and then knit, sip my coffee. I've also been doing like some morning just stretching. It's wonderful. <sighs> Love the little things like that. So started doing it really just this week and I adore it. There's something about to like the change of season. So it's because it is starting to get for the most part cold here. We've got our leaves are changing and it's just stunning like autumnal color change in the leaves right now. And it just makes you want to cozy up, hibernate, 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 all the things. So just leaning into that season right now and uh, trying not to be super frantic about a lot of stuff, um, just in general and enjoying the moments because this year has just flown by unbelievably so and uh, just trying to enjoy it more okay coffee and then the other whip that I dug out this though might not look as impressive as the last time you saw it I dug out my festival sweater so might not notice it but I completely so it was I had done the third row of baubles and then realized my stitch count was off now mind you this yarn this poor yarn this first started out as a Luxe Express by Espace Tricot I was not getting the proper gauge and when I got the proper gauge after ripping it out and starting over I did not like the fabric anymore so I ripped it out for the second time cast on the festival sweater this one I got to, I want to say, just after the first bobble and realized my stitch count was off. No, my gauge was off, wildly off. It was going to be horrible. So I ripped it back again and re it all to the third row of bobbles with the correct gauge, except I had the wrong stitch count. That's when I got frustrated with it and threw it in the closet. I dug this out and I was like, I really want this sweater. Relooked it back over, real, you know, it's like, okay, do I really have the wrong stitch count? Yes, I do. Da 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 da. 
ripped the whole thing out minus the collar because the this part and this first row of increases was correct. It was basically right here after the short rows where you increase again. That was that's where I made the mistake. So I ripped it back to there, re-knit it again. I am on the correct stitch gauge. I have now separated for sleeves. I did that last night. Love it. And I'm loving it. So it is an oversized fit, which I'm it's great. Love it. Um, and this yarn is resilient because it's been ripped out and re-knit. This is its fifth, excuse me, fifth iteration. And you really can't tell. You can tell a little bit like here, it looks a little bit funkier um, than here was a new ball, but it's going to block out just fine. Um, so the yarn I'm using is Double Sunday from Sandness Garn. So I'm actually using the original colors that she, Petite Knit did for the pattern. It's the Festival Sweater, my size, I think is what she calls it, or the adult size. And it is the Double Sunday in the colorway Whipped Cream. And then this black is not truly a black. It is a extreme dark navy called Sailor in the Dark. I had to think. Sailor in the Dark. Um, we are going to be getting a massive restock of Double Sunday shortly. Um, we are we do have sweater quantities available in some colors, not these. Unfortunately, both of these colors are still back ordered, but I'm in talks with Lori over at Mother Knitter, who imports Sandus Garn for us, um, to get sweater quantities of these colors back as soon as they arrive via the boat. Um, so, yes. Sandus Garn is one of my, I would say top five yarns for sure. And Double Sunday is just amazing yarn. Um, so I'm excited. It's like I said, separated for sleeves and I'm working on the body. So that's that project. I feel like I got really close to the camera just now. Um, and then I wanted to share, I'm not going to share the yarn because this yarn we will be getting in store soon. I say soon, it's probably going to arrive February or March pending. It might come sooner, it might not. So I don't wanna promise anything or get your hopes too up, but stay tuned for updates. But, You guys, it's like, it's like cashmere. It is not cashmere. It is just wool, but it's the softest wool, pure wool that I have felt in a very long time. Um, it is a European company, I will give you that. And like I said, we're going to be offering it soon, but I cast on a little selfish knitting and I'm going to knit myself a hat. Um, the pattern is, what did I choose? Stockholm hat by Petite Knit, I believe. Um, yeah, Stockholm hat. So stay tuned to see how this shapes up. This is literally the softest. Technically this yarn weight is larger than what that pattern calls for, but I just have tweaked the needle size and I think it's gonna work out just fine. Um, this yarn is, I will say deceptive because looking at it, to me, I would say, oh, it's a DK, but when you work with it, rather than it kind of condensing on itself like most yarns when you work because they kind of condense and then you block it and it reblooms it it doesn't it almost like it blooms as you knit with it sounds so weird um and then when you block it really blooms so they label this as a bulky and when i literally got the package i was like they lie like everybody else in bulky lies it's either way larger than bulky or way smaller than bulky I think this is like actually pretty darn close to bulky when you knit, when you knit with it. It's weird because everything in my body says this is DK when I'm looking at it. 
when I'm feeling it. But when I'm knitting it, it behaves like a bulky. It's blowing my mind. They do have a DK that I'm also playing around with, which again, to me, looked like more of a sport, but it's acting like a DK. It's so weird. Um, so I'm really intrigued by this. So stay tuned. New yarn going to be coming. Speaking of new yarn, there are tons of new yarns and things in the works. So definitely stay tuned to Instagram for all of those fun updates. Um, we got a lot of fun uh, new things coming into the store, especially for the um, first of the year. Um, where am I going? Ah, yes. Um, speaking of new things, we have received and is out the knitted Kavila. Ka Kalavila. Hold on. Kelvala. Kelvala? I do not know how to pronounce Finnish. Um, this is an 18 pattern book. This is gorgeous. It is, um, I believe all, yes, all color work, but only using two colors. Um, and they're all very accessible to all levels of knitters, um, both in finer weight and heavier weight yarns. It's all in English. Don't worry about that. Um, there are sock patterns, there are sweater patterns, there's cardigans, there's this cute, there's hat too. Show you this one. This is like a little cropped cardigan with color work. Love that. Um, of course, I love the cover photo. Um, so definitely recommend this book if you are into color work. But maybe you don't want like the intense, um, I didn't realize there were, there's two sock patterns in here, um, like Shetland where there's like multiple colors, multiple rows, three color color work, or just intense. This is like nice little bite sized chunks. Nothing's really truly all over color work. Um, you've just got some color work and then plain or some color work at the bottom and then plain. So it's very accessible. Um, I highly recommend this book and it's beautiful. It is on the website. Um, that price is in euros maybe. It's not that much. Um, so yeah, check it out on the website. Speaking of new yarn, um, we also got a restock of shelter. So the reason everyone is kind of running low on shelter is the mill that was doing shelter um, had some issues and had to halt production. And then I think they closed if I, if I remember the story correctly. And then they either reopened or they got another mill to buy that like spinning stuff. Anyway, long story short, they have re-upped their production of shelter and they are working round the clock to get shelter because shelter is one of Brooklyn Tweed's most fabulous yarns. Excuse me. Um, so they did a limited run, reached out to all the shops that carry um, shelter and it's like, Mitch was like, you want this yarn you need to get it quickly um so i did so we have lots of the yummy neutrals i'm just gonna go over them with you real quick this is snowbound this is a very light gray and i'm going to compare these for you this is fossil this is like the warm natural this is cooler than this quite a bit and then this is like the light gray. And then there's pumice. 
and you can kind of see the three color differences better. So pumice is just a wee bit darker than Snowbound. Pumice is what I used in my Douglas Cardi as one of the colors. Then you have Sweatshirt. Sweatshirt is like the same tone of pumice, but with the tiniest bit of warmth thrown in there. Like it's a gray, but it has this tiny, tiny bit of warm hue to it. And then we have soot, which is a bit darker gray. And then cast iron, which is the black. So we have, can I hold all these together? All these yummy neutrals. As you can see, I could have just pointed these, that row and that row is shelter. And then we also snagged some Long John's. So Long John's is their Christmas red. Beautiful, beautiful color. This would be a gorgeous like striped Douglas cardigan for sure. Um, so we have sweater quantities, like large multiple sweater quantities of each of those. And then we are getting kind of limited. We have like next to no blues. We have like one teal, I think. Oh, uh, no, that's almanac I can't read it from here um that's like our only teal blue we've got two of the purples we've got a little bit of pinks but like I said shelter is extremely limited so we can mix and match for you you can also mix and match in tones so tones is the same weight and the same woolen spun it's just a different sheep so Tones is 100% American Columbia wool. And this is, Shelter is a Targi Columbia. They pretty much feel the same, but I would say maybe Tones is the tiniest bit. Okay, Shelter has this sponginess to it. I don't know how else how to explain it, but it has a sponginess to it that sh that the tones doesn't have quite as much sponginess. But we also got restocked on our three colors that were back ordered from last January. <laughs> Finally, they came in. Um, this is the baseline undertone. So this is the darker gray. We have a little bit of the lighter gray as well. Um, this is the goldfinch overtone here and undertone here. So we have that as well, along with the pretty much all the other colors of tones. Um, so the, the thing with tones is basically they use a gray base to get this one and the white base to do this. It's the same color formula. So they complement each other very nicely. It's just, this is dyed on a gray base. This is dyed on a white base. So that is our restock from Brooklyn Tweed. We also got in our life in the long grass order. Um, this one was several months in the making. I'm going to go through all of the colors real quick. Do I have time? Barely. Um, I'm going to go through them really, really quickly. There's a full IGTV um, on our Instagram where we go through all the colors. Um, some of the colors have sold out, unfortunately, so I'm just going to swing through these. Moonbow. Beautiful. Of course, all of our life in the long grass is her fine sock, which is 75 superwash merino, 25 nylon. It is 460 yards, 100 grams. She does not give a gauge, but it is suitable for socks um, and garments. So this is Lock Crab, Selt, Marshes, Svara. That's always a popular one. Oxidized, Connemara Marble, Shoreline. This is Corrode, Yeast, and Chlorophyll. Pewter, Gray Slake, Barefoot. Ultra, uh, Hinoki, Mountain Path, Fizz, 
Crush, Viking. We have Druid, Rain, Storyteller, Wheat, Gorse, Tawny, Flax, Noon, always a popular one, Cauldron, Jade Grey, Nebula, Cockle Shell, Wolf, Soda, fun, unusual bright color from her, Dreamer, getting close, Thorn, beautiful, Hearth, Kiln, like I said on Instagram, we have a little more in depth. Sienna Pink, Dragon Seed, y'all know that one, it's popular. Reflect, getting the bottom of the barrel here. Augur, really rich one. Smolder, Jellyfish, Cactus Moon Soil. Halicon, Baroque, and Autumn Leaf, and Rose Garnet. So, all of those are available on the website. I'm trying to think what else. I think that about is about it. So, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. We have some events on our website. Of course, for all the up-to-date information, please go to our website or Instagram for all of the latest. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Hopefully, I have another finished object by then. See you guys. Bye. Bye.